Hey guys, welcome to the MATLAB environment. So I was thinking that we don't uh, do an intro anymore. We are just jumping right into the MATLAB environment. And at the end, you will just have the outro to have a preview on what's coming next. So with that being said, let's get started. Today's topic is special operators. And we are going to talk first about the apps function. So apps gives you the absolute value of a number. If we just suppress the rest of the output for the moment and we run this apps from minus one, this will give you the one. So it will give you the absolute value of this value inside the, of the brackets, of parentheses. If we use apps five, it just gives you five. That's the absolute value of this value inside of the parentheses. And if we generate a matrix, 10 by 10 matrix of random normally distributed numbers, we will get our temp one variable, which is this big 10 by 10 vector. As you can see, also with mi minuses here in front and also some positive values. And we can apply the apps function on this matrix. And if we do so, you will see that the minuses vanish. We only have positive values. So the apps function can also be applied to matrices, vectors, which are special cases of matrices, of course. So that's it for the apps function. Now jumping to the sign function. The sign function basically gives you a value either minus one, zero or one, depending on the sign of the value or if your value is zero. So the sign of minus 100 would be minus one. The sign of 30 would be one. The sign of zero would be zero. And the sign of the temp variable that we have created here would be like ones and minus ones. If there would be a zero, also a zero would appear, but as we can see, no zeros appear in this matrix. Jumping straight to the polynomials, we now create a polynomial of second order, which looks like this. To explain it a little, in a little bit more detail, so the first entry on the right, counting from the right hand side, this here is the zeroth index of the polynomial. This is basically x to the power of zero. This is x to the power of one, which is x. And this is x to the power of two. So the function is x squared plus four x plus two. If we now want to evaluate the function on specific or with specific values, we type in the polyval function, put in our polynomial, and then type in the value which you want to evaluate the function for. In this case, one. If we do this and print out the result, this is seven because x squared with one is one plus four times one is five plus two is seven. Easy, right? But we can also use the polyval function to give it a range of values. We choose the polynomial and want to put in values from 1 to 10. This gives us 7, 14, 23 and so on. Very straightforward. Now what's about if we want to find the roots of a function? I created a variable which is called num roots and then we want to search the roots of p. If we do this we get these values and we can use these roots that we have found and put them into polyval to evaluate this function with these roots. If we do so, however, we can see that there is a very, very tiny value. And actually, if we click on this value and maybe give it a temporary name, let's call it temp2 for now, evaluate again, and open temp2, you can see that one value is minus 4 point etc to the power of minus 16 so very close to zero and the other one is zero and that's just a matter of precision here so to get a precise value let's just use another function just for the sake of explanation let's use three as the second coefficient then our function would be x squared plus 3x plus 2. if we now evaluate this whole thing you see we actually would get zero uh, for the function if we put in the roots and for the roots themselves we get minus two and minus one you can easily test it with that function here 
we suppress the output again and jumping right into section number five, which is to find coefficients for the functions. We can use the poly function and put in the number of roots. So if we do so, we basically get back the coefficients of our function. So x squared plus 3x plus 2. Very easy, right? If we want to merge functions, we can do the following. We first define a first polynomial, which is x squared plus 4x plus 2, and a polynomial 2, which is x squared plus 0x, so no x here, plus 1. So this is x squared plus 1. If you want to skip an x value, x to the n, you type in a 0 at that place, and it will be ignored then. So here I defined merge func variable, and I use the conf function and type in both polynomials I have defined. Please note that this is not a multiplication but rather a concatenation of functions. So if we execute this, we get five coefficients which basically defines our function. So this is x to the power 4 plus 4x to the power 3 plus 3x squared plus 4x plus 2. That would be the function. We can also use the deconvolution, so deconv, but that's not going to be covered here. So I hope that I could give you a broad overview about the polynomial functions, about apps and sign. So that was the video on MATLAB operators. I hope that you enjoyed it as always. And we covered the basics of the apps and sign function and how you can work with polynomials as you have seen. And in the next video we're going to cover naming conventions. It's quite useful actually and gives you a good guidance on how to name variable, constants as well as functions. So I would say see you in the next video and make sure to keep engineering your mind. Peace!